It's going to start at 6.15. Oh. Hi, everybody. I didn't know that. We have 15 minutes to figure yeah. it out. I'm having some technical difficulties at the moment, so I'm trying to figure out this. Uh, trying to get my workout to upload, which it did earlier now. It won't, so give me a minute. We're going to start at 6.15 anyways. Um, so I'm going to warm up. Warm up. Warm it up. Warm it up. <laughs> it's like working out, but like easy and not working out. I hope you guys can hear the birds outside. We have some chickadees outside our window. Last time we did this, it was like pitch black. It's still sunny. Cardinals, chickadees. I just tried it through. Game, I just tried it, it didn't work. Are you kidding me? Uh, it's okay though. So I can do it off my notes. This is going great. This is why I start everything like 50 minutes early, and I didn't today. Okay. 
It's okay. Let me go off my notes. We're still planning on a 615 start, so just spin. Spin. Twiddle your little legsies. That's right. Twiddle. Twiddle your legsies. Motivator. Such a motivator. Cards. Yeah, I can just hold my phone up. Yeah. You want me to get Yoni? I'll be right back. Haley's going to entertain you. Yeah, no, I'm not. What? Haley, entertain. Just keep doing this. <laughs> it's really straightforward. You just pedal, I think. I don't know. Five more minutes. I found it. I bought one of those weird iPhone holders that goes under your stem for my trainer so that I can read notes like this. Nerd. Works pretty well. I've done a lot of conference calls that is on this Wahoo. Very dorky. <laughs> a whole lot of them. Okay. Five more minutes. Yeah, five more minutes, and we're gonna start. Playing workouts. Of course, there's an update, and it's us that's doing it. <laughs> this is the time. Yeah. Hey, you guys, I want to update your computers right now. Well timed. Yeah. Ooh, got it. Did it work? Oh, thank you, baby Jesus. It's in your teeth. Yeah, I'm not going to sweat on my phone. Okay. A couple more minutes. So today's workout is going to be based off of the last time we did this. It's called a mindful loading workout. We did threshold workouts, um, low kind of dose threshold, three minutes. We worked on a lot of, well, mindfulness. We worked at our breathing techniques. We worked on kind of warming up into workouts and really connecting with our bodies and, and feeling Feeling the intensity build. What I want to do is be able to connect you back to the feelings and the sensations that you get while riding. I mean, probably all of us are on a power meter right now. Uh, not a lot of us are getting to ride with other people, getting the sensations that we normally get. Some of us aren't even riding outside right now. Yeah, before that, you know, 
training can just connect you in a lot of ways from, from your body and from your sensations and from your mind. Um, we spend a lot of time trying to avoid what's going on in our head a lot of times and putting in headphones, doing stuff like that, um, can distract us from, from ourselves, from our bodies, uh, from our well-being. And we can often get a little disconnected from the, from our, uh, our intentions with training and with riding. You know, for me, riding is a, it's a, it's a, it's a good thing. It's a, it's my happy place. It brings me joy. Even when I go hard, it brings me joy. What doesn't bring me joy is not being able to do numbers, not being able to do what I really want to do. And what I find is in training is we have about one more minute. We're going to start with uh, about 10 minutes of warm up. So, so it's no stress. Uh, what I really find is that when I want to perform, I perform because I was able to listen to my body in the training and I was able to listen to my time and, 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 and really fit cycling into my life in a way that is productive. And that's what we all want, right? We want cycling to be a, a good thing in our lives and a productive thing. Um, we're about 30 seconds here. We're going to, I'm going to start the timer. So if everybody wants to, I'm going to start my timer here. It's going to be 55 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and start now. So I'm warming up here. In, uh, in 10 minutes, we're going to start with a, uh, just like we did last time, we're going to start with a, a four-step threshold ramp, just up to threshold. I want you to do this by heart rate or do it by power if you want. But really, you should be doing this by perceived effort. So I want you to kind of feel what it feels like to build up over four steps to your aerobic threshold. No need to go too hard uh, in the build up, in the warm up, in the in the step up. Really kind of let your body warm up to it. This isn't uh, the goal isn't to put out more power than everyone else. The goal is to to really connect with yourself. So during this time, this 10 minutes, I want you to take the opportunity to take some really deep breaths. Really connect. Maybe take 20 deep breaths. Breathe into your floor. Bring your rib cage down into a neutral position. Rib cage towards your pelvis. Really pedal with your hips here. Take some big deep breaths in. Out. Let's do 20 breaths. In. And this is a warm-up. You shouldn't be going so hard that you can't take controlled breaths. This is part of connecting with, with your body. Feeling what a warm-up feels like. It's riding with your friends and riding to the coffee shop. It's riding on the bike path. We're not really worried about passing a bunch of people. It's riding in your neighborhood. That's a warm-up. It's spinning your legs. It's talking, it's noticing everything around you. Keep taking nice deep breaths. It's feeling the sensations of your body. Are you tired? Do you like to feel like crap? Do they feel really good? And if things from outside start creeping in, you're late, you got something to do afterwards, you had a stressful day, you might not want to do this, you might not be ready to suffer. Focus on your breath. Inhale. Exhale. And really pay attention to that breathing. See it. Feel it.
if you're here tonight and you're on the trainer, you're here for a reason. You want to get a workout in. You want to see people. You want to hang out with people. You want to talk to people. You want to be involved in some way. You might just not want to be alone. <clears throat> so consider, consider really being here now. Consider how everyone else is feeling. Be a little bit more connected to everyone. Know that everyone else is on the other side of the screen. They're all doing it at the same time. It's live. Feel some connection there. It's pretty cool. So about five and a half minutes of warm up left. One thing I think about often when I'm riding is how lucky I am to have a connection with cycling. How lucky I am to have found this thing, whether it's the one thing or not, that I just can't live without for positive reasons. It gives so much to my life. It gives so much to a lot of people's lives. It's there when you need it. And it's, it's pretty important um, in my life. And I'm really lucky to have cycling, to have raced, to race, to have ridden my BMX bike, to be able to ride in the woods, to be able to ride on the roads. Pretty lucky. Pretty lucky that I found it. There's a pretty good chance that I, I never would have. And I don't know what my life would be like otherwise. So consider that for yourselves. When you go out for a ride, when you're on a trainer, consider how lucky you are to have an outlet like this. Consider how lucky you are to even have a trainer or a bike to put on it. That's pretty profound when you think about it. There are people that don't. There are people getting different situations. People find cycling or they find other things or, or they never do. Uh, here, consider yourself one of the lucky ones. So we have about three and a half minutes to the next, to the change of intervals. So we're going to do three minute build up blocks. The first block is going to be in your like endurance to upper endurance zone. This is going to be that endurance zone where you go out for a couple hour ride, you're training, but you can ride side by side with somebody and chat. This is the group, this is the group feeling. This is what we, what a lot of us like to do in our social lives and cycling is getting out with our, with our buddies and getting out with your buddies and hammering and not speaking isn't really that social. So this is what I call bar to bar pace. The next one after that, it's going to get closer to the tempo. So it's going to be in that like four to five perceived exertion. That's going to be speaking, but not in full sentences and definitely not full conversations, but definitely able to think and definitely able to speak, make decisions. And instead of pushing as big a numbers as you can for those zones, I really want you to wait it out. I want you to let it build. Three minutes is not that long. It'll build up over the time. And by the end of this, it'll certainly, you'll be sweaty. You're sweating all over your floor just like me. Our cat teeny is just sitting over here on the side of the couch, taking a little nap, mocking us. We're about a minute and a half. It's weird riding indoors, looking outside with the, probably the nicest weather we've had in six months, but I'm enjoying my time so far. We've been out in the garden a lot. I just removed a lot of grass. 
And I feel pretty good about it. About a minute and a half. We just put up some more bird feeders. We have a pair of wrens that are hanging around now. Pretty excited about that. We have some hummingbirds coming around. We put that out. But one minute. We have about 20 seconds, so take some nice deep breaths here and focus. Really get what your body's trying to tell you. And prepare mentally for the stepping up. This isn't going to be that hard. Six seconds. Go. So again, this is, this is buddy pace. This is bar to bar. So it's an interval in the way that we're increasing our power and it's a short period of time, but it's not that hard. Intervals don't always have to be hard. But when you think of an interval, you think Tabatas or 30-30s or five minutes or three minutes. You know, this is on that three minute side, but not a hard three minutes. So over this ramp, we're just gonna get into our threshold zone. Just gonna get into that zone where it's really hard. It's what we could potentially do for an hour-ish. It's hard. So take your time with it. We have about two minutes left in the zone. So what's your body telling you now? A little more tension, some spore spots maybe. Maybe some hot spots in your legs or in your feet. This is where things start to heat up, quite literally. Core body temperature comes up. This is where you'll probably start to sweat if you're not already. This is where your body starts doing work. This is out of that mostly fat burning zone. You're starting to burn some carbohydrates. So once we go through the ramp, we have about a minute left in this. Once we go through the ramp, we're gonna have a five minute cool down of just endurance. Then we're gonna do five one minute FRC, or functional reserve capacity, uh, one minute efforts. So, FRC, this is above threshold. FRC is hard to do with a group because it's very dependent on your individual metrics. But generally, it ends up being over threshold and just under the VO2 zones that you're, or low VO2 zones. Stuff that you might be doing five minute, three minute, and one minute work in. But this is very low end. So this is something that you can do either in an endurance block and add just enough lactate in to start tripping your systems, or something you can do in a building block. Depending on how much time you need to spend in that lactate building zone, about three seconds, okay? A little harder. So I should still be able to talk real well on this. But this workout, depending on how much time you need to spend in that zone, this one minute workout, one minute effort, can be extended anywhere between, I don't know, two, three, 
out to 10 or 20. Granted, it's not that efficient when you get out to that 20, you know, when you, even when you get past 10, you might push it out to three minutes of the same work uh, and increase the total time in it. However, this is a really good go-to for, like I said, endurance blocks uh, towards the end. Also into your building blocks. When you're starting to do more intensity and you need to drop in that lactate or a race prep. When you need to get, or even midweek, where you need to get that lactate dropped in to get a response while maintaining the relative freshness. One minute, just over the threshold. Threshold being the number that you should relatively be able to do for an hour. One minute of just above that. Is that gonna kill your legs? No, it shouldn't. If it does, you're going too hard, period. So make sure, we're gonna do five of those. To make sure that you're going to be able to do five of whatever effort you put out. And believe me, the first one always hurts the worst. After that, they start to grow on you. Then you start to like the little guys. I don't believe you. Huh. She doesn't believe me. I mean, I don't really know about what you're talking about. Here. <laughs> wow, here for comic relief. Yeah. About 30 seconds left in this one, and then we're going to jump up. This is going to be tempo to mid tempo. So at tempo, you should be able to talk, definitely not in full sentences. That should feel hard, six seconds. Really narrow your focus down here, go. Number three minutes, this is gonna build. Tempo is typically done in 10, 20, 40 minute blocks. So three minutes ain't that bad. Get in touch with your breathing here. Feel your posture. Does your posture change as you start pedaling harder? Do you feel like you're still pushing down solidly through the bottom of your feet? Pay attention to that. This is mindful cycling. What is your body doing? Don't fight it. Don't let it take over. Just feel what it's doing. One minute down, two to go. You're definitely sweating now. I'm definitely sweating now. I'm sweating. Haley's definitely sweating now. Oh, thanks. Yeah, she's sweating. My glasses are fogging up. Oh no! That's the real indicator. Yeah. This is the foggy glasses zone. <laughs> the zone of fog. It's true. Our cat moved to the window, she doesn't like the trainers. <laughs> so this is about 70% of my threshold heart rate. Okay, about a minute left, and then we're gonna jump up. We're gonna do just that threshold. Don't go, don't go ham here. It's gonna get plenty hot. Head. Oh no! Wait a second. Oh, wow. What are you doing there? Come on, soul cycle people, really <laughs> dig. 30 seconds. I'm moving to New York after this. 
We'll make it big. <laughs> Less than 20 seconds. Ten secundos. We're gonna do threshold. Remember to breathe here. Remember to pay attention. Three, two, one. Brrr, motorboat. Is that pedal harder? Is that pedal harder? <laughs> okay. Better shift. Girl, you better put that thing in the big ring. What? Push that side. You never shift on that I know. side. I know. That might be why. That's my right. It doesn't work. It's okay. Thanks <laughs> for the advice, and, uh, coach. Pedal really easy and just push it hard. Pedal really easy and push that pedal hard. Pedal easy and push it hard. Pedal hard. Pedal easy. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas. Two minutes. Remember, this sucks. Yeah, but control it. Okay. But this isn't going to be as hard as we're going to go for the minute. So. I'm about 85% of my threshold heart rate. It builds. You won't see it right away. Minute and a half. Control your breathing. Firm pedal strokes. Really feel your glutes on fire here. Think about your core, nice and straight. Thirty seconds. Deep breath here. Twenty seconds. Keep pedaling. Keep digging. Five seconds. Three, two, one. Okay. Awesome. Back to endurance. Great job. That was awesome. See, three minutes. It just starts to suck, but it's doable. They're definitely sweaty. Here's the thing about threshold. Your respiratory rate, your breathing rate, becomes a little more out of control. That's how you know you're in threshold. When you can't harness your breath, when you can't slow it down for long periods of time, you know, for more than a couple of breaths, when you can't really control it. So we have about four more minutes of this. So really, Take some deep breaths now. And calm, 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 calm. Take a little sip ski with some brew. Check out your window for birds. Nothing. No. Wow. So these next efforts. I don't list a power file here. 
So we don't want you to hit a specific number. VO2, even light VO2, can feel different on different days. Depending on how you feel, depending on how your rested state, depending on your fueling, consistency, how much time you're taking off. I haven't ridden in a few days, so this is gonna feel like crap for me. But I want you to do it. It's one minute. Go hard. Make sure you can do five of them. Think about that. Make sure that you can do five of these as hard as you can by feel. And burps. Feeling your body and what it's doing in a bike race or bike riding is the most important variable you have. It's the most important analytical tool that we have. Yeah. Yeah, Brad. That's the thing. We want to work on, on, on breathing duration here. What I really want you to do is focus on that out breath. What happens is we get in this outside of our body mode where our aerobic system is just taken over. It's demanding intake, demanding oxygen. And its go-to mode is to breathe hard and fast. Let's slow that respiratory rate down. Focus on really big, deep exhales. Get out as much of that O2 as you can and get as much of that oxygen as you can. Help the CO, help the CO2 out, oxygen in. We have less than a minute left. So remember, one minute. You can go in the drops for this. Either way, you're probably gonna get pretty low. Everybody tends to shorten up on the bars here. You are not gonna have great control of your breath here. 40 seconds. That's just how it is. So do what you can with it. Connect where you can, override it when you can. Feel your body. And keep telling yourself, you can do this. 20 seconds. Somehow I think my timer is in half seconds, but I'm not sure that that's accurate. Nine seconds. Let's take some deep breaths here. Three, two, one, go. Push deep. I'll probably shut up in a second. Already my body wants to dig. This is getting across to that group. Before you get dropped before the break goes. This is hard. 16 seconds. Five seconds. Three, two, one, woo! Rush. We have two minutes between. Feel your breath. Feel what your body's saying to you. Calm. Big exhales. As your body burns fuel. Huh. It creates carbon. 
heart builds up in your lungs, you want to exhale. The less you exhale, the higher your respiratory rate becomes because you need to move fresh oxygen in and carbon out. In, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. So lengthen and increase how much you exhale and it'll counter with how much you inhale. Breathing is the most natural thing you do, period. It's the one thing we can't live without. And the way we breathe and the muscles we use to breathe are what make us upright. It's what changes our gait on two feet. We have very unique respiratory systems. It's unique to us and a couple of goats. Ten seconds. If you think you can go a little harder, go a little harder. Five, four, three, two, one. Bing! Dig. Stay seated. Uh, this is big booty watts. Bazooka watts. Come from your hips. Push down to the bottom of your feet. Your cadence will increase naturally. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two. One. Oh, look at you. You did too. Dang. Wow. Oh. You hit me yet? No. Um, I have a question. Yes. Is there a certain RPM you're looking for? Right. Naturally high RPM. Okay. Nothing specific. Usually, when you get into this, You'll be pushing over 100. Okay. High RPM is fine. What that will do is the higher the heart rate, the higher, sorry, the higher the RPM, higher the heart rate. Okay. Heart rate takes a little while to catch up. So over a minute, you're not really going to see that big of a change right away. In fact, it'll still go up a little bit after you stop. One minute. So I'd say if you're going over 105, 110, maybe shift to a harder gear. Okay. And see if you can push a little bit more power. Okay. RPM is a really good indicator. It's an indicator of how much, how much, uh, of what fuel you're using, your fast twitch muscle uh, availability, relative freshness. We have 30 seconds. Too low of RPM, and you're going to burn out. Okay. You're going to build a lot of lactate. Your muscular endurance is going to decrease very quickly. So we're looking for that sweet spot. 15 seconds. That 100, 110 RPM okay. is a great zone to be in. If you go over that, hit it down a little bit. Okay. Five seconds. Three, two, one. I'm sorry. Feel stability in the hips. Really push on to the bottom of your feet here. Remember big exhales. Go 
focus on your breathing at the time. 15 seconds. Five seconds. Three, two, one. I'm so sorry, everybody. That. Now we're starting to feel it. You might be saying to yourself right now, oh, maybe I can't do two more of these. Yeah. Maybe that was dumb of me. Mm -hmm. You can. You can because you're all capable, wonderful, <laughs> smart, beautiful, probably smelly and sweaty. I feel like you're feeding them my line so you get charismatic me. creatures. Wait a second. Yeah. This is plagiarism. Yeah. <sighs> also, the doves are here. Or oh. doves are. Here. I gotta get up to see <laughs> Bird report? Yeah. We have this very handsome couple of morning doves that like to frequent our yard and our roof. They have a very pleasant little purr. They're always down there in the grass. They love seed on the ground. Really pleasant little creatures. Makes me appreciate pigeons a little bit more. 25 seconds. Remember, you got two more of these. If you went too hard, you hate yourself right now. If you didn't, let's do some real work here. You're more than halfway through the workout. 20 seconds. Don't regret your life choices now. <laughs> 10 seconds, and I am really happy that you all joined me tonight. <laughs> Five seconds, and I'm thrilled that you're able to do this. Go. Press to the bottom of the feet. Feel that respiratory rate increase. Connect with your hips. Don't look at your timers. Listen to your breath. Feel it. This is hard. It's gotta be hard. Otherwise, everyone would do it. And you wouldn't be unique for doing it. Look at you. 20 seconds. My little pain cave rainbows. <sighs> 10 seconds. And you can do infinity of these. Good. Kill it. Congratulations, we're all done. So you can't one more. Uh, Just chill. I'd love to know after this if you're actually thankful for being here or regretting it. But I really hope that at the end of this, you have a tool that you can use now. So you have a mindful approach to your own cycling and to your own effort, controlling your effort, not letting the effort control you. It's not a car, you don't just press the gas, there's real feeling involved in this. It takes finesse at the high end and it takes finesse at the low end. But at the high end, you're the driver, you're the one calling the shots. It's you that gets the extra couple of watts out. It's you that gets the extra couple of heartbeats up. It's you that controls it. It's you that doesn't let you go overboard with it. And it's you that improves on it every time. It's not me. It's not Haley. <laughs> it's Haley. It's definitely not me. <laughs> it's definitely not. <laughs> 30 seconds. Hal Sparrow. Hal Sparrow. 
Good buggers. 15 seconds. One more of these. You can dig through this. If you're tapped out, okay, you're not tapped out. Just do it. Five more seconds. Three, two, one. <laughs> Control your breathing. Stop laughing. Battle. Get a big gear. Ramp that thing up. Your heart rate should, heart rate should be increasing faster now. To the top of your zone. Your pressure will be higher. 20 seconds. Fifteen. Push. Push through this. Breathe out. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Here, bud. Hi, bud. Go team. Okay. We're going to cool down for two minutes. And then psych, we're doing that again. Then we're going to do a little bit of endurance. We're going to cool down. Man. How amazing is it that you have the ability to push your body voluntarily to that point? And that's not even as hard as you can go. Think of the possibilities. Debatable. But really, over time, training is cumulative. Stress is cumulative. Stress in your life, stress in your, your mental side, Stress from the bike. All of that stress kind of adds up and it's cumulative. So the more you have the power to recover from efforts on the bike, which are painful, which are taxing, and which pull you out of a state in which you have all control of, the more you have power to pull yourself out of states that you have no control of off the bike. Training can be very metaphorical. And I happen to be the king of metaphors. <laughs> of sappy, hippie metaphors. It's true, she says. Take some water here. Oh, yeah. I just squirted on my nose. Okay. Do a couple minutes of endurance here. Bump it up a little bit. It should be plenty doable. We're getting some aerobic work here. And what we're really doing is we're gobbling up some of that lactate that we just dumped into our system. Misconception about lactate. First of all, that it's lactic acid. Lactate is a byproduct. Of fuel use. <clears throat> the less fuel you have, the more lactate it gets dumped in. The harder you go, when that lactate gets dumped in, your body either uses it for a fuel at a predetermined amount or of what you have stored, or it runs out and it quote builds up. It doesn't actually build up. But what happens is you stop being able to use it. But what does build up Gives you that burning sensation in your legs. Gives you that burning sensation in the rest of your body. So what we need to do is learn how to use that lactate for fuel. Your body wants to use that lactate for fuel. And that lactate is what fuels that fast twitch muscle. It's what fuels you when you're going super hard. When carbohydrates and fat just aren't doing the kick. So by increasing the amount of lactate building exercises we do and bookending it 
by adequate fueling and recovery, then we give our body the response it wants. Functional overreach, where your body goes beyond what it's truly capable of enough to take the impetus to repair stronger and to adapt to that workload. That's what training is. Over and over and over, we adapt. How do we adapt? Functional overload, recovery. Chocolate milk. Chocolate milk. Gargle chocolate milk. Stop yeah. I do this. So all we have in our bottles right now is just chocolate milk. <laughs> We've just been drinking it. Not true. Mm. The harder you go, the more chocolate milk you want to drink while you're riding. Ew. True story. Oh, no, God. don't do that. God, don't do that. Oops. I'm sorry. I lied. <laughs> you didn't have a stomach ache <laughs> Okay. Still doing some endurance here. Got about 10 seconds left. We're ready for a 10 minute cool down. And, uh, pressure off. So 10 minutes here. If you notice now, and from our last workout, I'm a fan of the warm up and cool down. A lot of people skip the, the, the warm up and the cool down. A lot of times they skip the warm up by going straight into endurance. It's a no no. Use your time wisely. Going straight into hard work does not make you better all the time. Warm up. Give your body a chance to accept the work that you're giving it, to accept the adaptation that you're giving it. And likewise, let yourself cool down. Give yourself some time. The thing I like about the cool down, not just the release of pressure on my legs and my body, and the gradual cooling down of core body temperature, but I use this as a time of reflection on the ride I just did. I use it for reflection on my mental state going into it, my physical state going into it. Throughout, was I focused? Was I distracted? How did my body feel? Was I ready? Did I warm up enough? All those things are, are valid and they, they mean something in, this, in the long-term scheme of things. So reflect on that. Give yourself the opportunity to make those adjustments that you need to make. You're not a robot. We're not robots. Robot. Kaylee's a robot, but I'm not I'm a robot. Not a robot. <laughs> she can do this stuff all day. <laughs> no, I'm That's actually her 300th one minute effort today. <laughs> Literally has not lost a bit of power. She's been like twerking. No, you gargle that chocolate milk. And coffee. Coffee. But really reflect on your work. Reflect on your week. You have this nice, oxygen-rich environment in your brain. How many times have you gone out for a ride and had this like brilliant idea and got home and forgot the dang thing? Oh, 100, every day. Yeah, it's, a little, it's, it's day. called bike riding. Oh, that's <laughs> what it is. As you get, as you get more <laughs> into that aerobic zone, you're just flushing your brain with oxygen. Oh. You're thinking sharply, and if you're not thinking sharply, you're making mistakes. Control your breath. Get those nice big exhales. Get that, get that build up. Get that carbon build up that's in your lungs that wants to get out. That's making you make poor decisions. Let your, let your body do the work it needs to do. Did you fuel enough? All things to consider. Did you drink enough? Are you out of water? Is the weather nice? Are there birds? What are your neighbors up to? <laughs> How are your allergies? That's a good question. Yeah. So now is when you start preparing for your next ride. On the cool down, you start thinking, all right, 
That was good or bad. How am I going to adjust to this? Because your next ride is going to be affected by what you do when you get off the bike. It's how well you recover. How well you rest. We all have lives. You got kids. You got cats. Looking at you, Joan. You got responsibilities. So those take a toll on you. So if you have an important ride, or riding is important to you, or feeling good is important to you, Make that a bit of a priority. It doesn't have to be the priority. But give yourself a break. Eat the food you need to eat. If you're cracked from this ride, eat some more food. Eat some food right after this. Have a snack. Make a very nice dinner. Is this rolling? No. Oh, boy. I don't know why it doesn't automatically show. Yeah, Gabe, automatic. sorry. This thing... Well, uh, there we go. It doesn't auto scan. Yeah. Or auto. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the fan. Period. <laughs> hey, sorry, Jolene. I my uh, my ticker wasn't uh, going here, so I didn't see your your response there. 22 minutes ago. I hope you, hope you caught up. Dave, I'm glad you can make it, buddy. Gabe, I didn't see your response there, but uh, yes, heart rate will lag. Which is why I do these off feel. That's why it's important to know how this feels. Because if you're not getting if you're not getting the feedback from your computer, you need to be able to get the feedback from your body. Well, a little less than four minutes, three and a half minutes now. Um, stick around for this for about five minutes or so afterwards and uh, chat, see what you guys have to say. Uh, yeah, Gabe, it's more of a perceived effort, right? So it's the feeling of how hard can you go for a minute and how, can, how hard can you go for six minutes? Really, it's one really hard six-minute effort broken up into one-minute sections. So perceived effort is not just the effort itself. A perceived effort is also how quickly you recover from that and how prepared you are for the next effort. How was that for everybody? Hope that uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope it wasn't too monotonous. I'm not uh, not a big fan of overly complicated workouts. I like my workouts to be consistent. I like them to be doable, reachable, digestible. I like workouts that you can fit into different periods of time. That are your go-to workouts. Uh, Gabe, yeah, so would I reduce the recovery time? Absolutely. Less recovery time, the better for these. So, really, one minute to 30 seconds between a one minute effort is a little bit more appropriate. However, I probably wouldn't be able to talk through the whole thing if I did it like that. So, when I do these, I do them in one minute. I do one minute out on the road, and I usually, I usually start around 10 minutes worth of these guys. So that's 10 minutes recovery overall and 10 minutes of work overall. And then I'll build in. 
I wouldn't necessarily, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, it doesn't, it, it, the answer is it depends. You can increase the effort. I think the most important thing is not necessarily increase the effort, but to increase the volume in which you're doing it. That doesn't necessarily mean that doing six of them today and doing 10 of them tomorrow is the right way to do it. Increasing gradually over time would be more appropriate. But really, with a lot of these, uh, <laughs> yeah, humble brag, Gabe. Yeah, with, with this, the VO2 type efforts, by the way, we have about 30 seconds left. Uh, you really want to build up, I mean, especially for something like cyclocross, shorter events, track racing, etc. around that 30 minutes worth of workload. That's, uh, that's about what most people can handle at that VO2 FRC level. Uh, so six minutes is a pretty small fraction of, of 30 minutes, but it's worthwhile to increase over time while also increasing aerobic capacity. I'm coming down to three seconds and you guys can stop when you want, but I'll keep pedaling here and answer some questions for you. So if this was a, this was a race block or, uh, you know, this was uh, a sharpening up block for me. I might try to increase this to around 25, 30 minutes worth of work. I might also increase those one minute to three minute efforts and build out three minute blocks or five minutes uh, at about the same power. Three minutes and five minutes should be able to do about the same amount of power. Um, and increase the duration. So maybe I start out at like four by five minutes. Uh, and then I move up to, to five by five, uh, or even up to six by five, but getting around that 30 minute number plus is really crucial. Uh, building in a little bit of endurance work with it to kind of maintain that lactate adaptation and, um, yeah, get strong, get fast. Okay, uh, I really want to thank everybody for, uh, hey, for the Velodrome for having me back for a second round of this. I really enjoyed the last one. I really enjoyed this one. Uh, sorry, it was a bit of a crap show at the beginning. Uh, caught up a little bit off, off guard there with my computer failure, but we made it work. We got it. I'm really happy that uh, you joined me. I'm really glad I could make it. And as always, my wonderful co host, <laughs> Haley, and the cats. Uh, yeah. Dan asked for an overview. Okay, so Dan, he missed the, the middle of the workout. And oh, again, I'll try and post this. I tried to post it earlier with a fit file, but it didn't really go. Uh, I uh, This workout is really for the, uh, it's not necessarily a super fitness-based workout. Um, it can be extended by time. Uh, this is just an hour's worth. This could be done on a trainer or outdoors. You could do this over a three hour period if you wanted to um, and throw that in the middle of your duration somewhere. But essentially we did some warm up. We did uh, a four step threshold block. We did a cool down and we did five one minute sub VO2 efforts. Yeah, right. It's a, yes, it's an extraction of the total time spent in VO2 for a whole race. If you think about racing, think about a points race, think about a cycle cross race, think about a crit. You're either going VO2 or you're going easy. There's not a lot of time spent thresholding. Just about the only time you're doing threshold is when you're time trialing. That's about it. So jumping that workload in over time is much more reminiscent of a racing effort and both allows the increase in usage and adaptation to that lactate, but also keeps you from burning out all those fast twitch muscles that you need to make accelerations. If you were to do 20 minutes of that, you would just burn out like a candle, just burn out. And you don't get that wick back 
uh, necessarily easily. So in the more time you do in that, you can really burn out that zone. So that's why we keep it short. That's why we do five minute efforts. So we do three minute efforts. And that's why I like these one minute efforts because it gets the job done and it increases your leg speed and it increases your capacity for fast, hard work. <laughs> yeah, Phyllis, I see you. I, I'm glad to see you back on uh, after a major surgery. Uh, man, it's tough. I've been through some uh, some hard uh, health times myself, and it's always difficult to, to come back. And I think that uh, we can make training really overcomplicated, and I also think we can uh, overemphasize some of the importance of, I don't know, total volume or, or how, how stressful it can really be. So I really hope that you can use this workout. If you go back and check out my workout before, uh, on just doing just doing threshold work, um, I really hope that it can help you listen to your body a little bit more. It can help you figure out, uh, you know, what you need to recover and get back on track. Best of luck with it. Okay. Pausing it. I'll sit in my sweaty chair. Uh, again, everybody, thank you. Um, Gabe, thank you. Bobby, thank you. Joan, thank you. I really appreciate everybody coming out. Um, and I hope to have the opportunity one day to do this again. Um, a little plug for myself. Um, this is based off of my uh, Stephen Hyde coaching, my personal coaching. Um, I'm currently accepting clients. If you need anything, please let me know. Um, you can reach me on Facebook here. Um, I'll, uh, yep, yeah, you'll find my email and everything on there. Um, always happy to have a conversation. Uh, and if I can help in anything, please let me know. Um, I really enjoyed it. And uh, share with your friends if, uh, if you liked it. Uh, or if you didn't like it and you want somebody to uh, suffer a little bit more, please feel free to share it with them um, on your Facebook or Instagram or anything like that. Um, leave me any feedback. I'll check back in on this thread and, and see see what you guys have to say, how much, how much crap you talked about me while I was gone. Um, yeah, until next time. Thank you.